Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to continue talking about finishing and polishing. For the same video in Arabic, kindly check the link in the description box below. In the previous video, we discussed the finishing and polishing tools for class 1 and 2 resin-based composite restorations. And in this video, we're going to talk about the finishing and polishing tools used for class 3, 4 and 5 resin-based composite restorations. Okay, as we said in the previous video, it is very, very, very important to shape the restoration before you light cure. Okay, so you shape it, create anatomy, remove the excess, make sure that the margins are well adapted, uh, make sure that there is uh, no excess anywhere and no gaps, then you light cure. Otherwise, finishing and polishing process will take very long, up to 45 minutes or an hour. Okay. So it is very important to take your time while doing the composite, okay, and shaping it, not just placing a blob and depending on the finishing and polishing uh, for the final shape of the restoration. We discussed the diamond points in previous videos and you can find the link in the description box below. Let's start with class three and four uh, composite restorations, okay? Let's see here, in the, on the palatal surfaces, we can use the ball or the round diamond point. We can also use the short flame or the football. Let's see here, how are we going to use the round or the ball diamond point, okay? We're going to do similar to uh, using any finishing diamond point. We're going to do gentle strokes, okay? Very light pressure to remove the excess. We're going to preserve the marginal ridge and then remove uh, any excess on the palatal surfaces, okay? We cannot use this tool on the facial surfaces or the buccal surfaces because it will destroy all of the contour, okay? So let's see here in a class 4 restoration, okay? Uh, we can use it to finish the palatal surface. Okay, so we need to go very gently. Okay, in the lower interiors, it's used in the same way. For example, if we have a class three or a class four here, we'll do gentle strokes on the lingual surfaces, not touching the marginal ridge. We can also use the short flame or the football, okay, on the palatal surfaces, either on class three or class four. Okay, so similarly, just light touches on the palatal surface, okay, leaving the marginal ridge so it is not destroyed, either on the upper or in the lower, same thing. For example, here we have a class three, we're going to just remove the excess and finish it using the football or short flame. And we don't use the football on the facial surfaces, it will destroy the contour. Similar to class two, we can use the needle diamond point interproximally to remove the excess. For example, here we have a class three with excess uh, in the margins. So we gently remove the excess, very gently. We can go from the restoration to the tooth, okay, to remove the excess, okay. But we have to take care not to remove the contact. So we don't allow the, the diamond, uh, the needle diamond point to go through the contact so you don't lose the contact area, okay. Similarly here in class three, for example, uh, there is some excess, you can remove it using the needle. We can also use the needle diamond point facially, okay, to adjust the contour if we had a, cla a class three or a class four extending to the facial surface, okay? Uh, it's important to follow the contour of the tooth, okay? And remove very minimal, very light pressure, okay? Also, we can use the needle diamond point to finish class five restorations, especially around the margin, but we need to take care not to destroy the gingiva, okay? So very light touch, very light pressure to remove the excess around the margins and uh, on the surface of the restoration, okay? It is very important when finishing the restorations that you follow the contour of the tooth. You don't want it to be flat, okay? 
because the teeth, as you know, has a specific contour. Each tooth has a specific contour. So you need to follow the contour of the tooth when finishing and polishing, okay? So the needle diamond point can be used for class three, four, and five, either facially or interproximally. Uh, similar to class one and two composite restorations, the finishing and polishing strips can be used for class three and four restorations interproximally, but also we need to take care not to remove the contact area. So it is placed and you uh, finish in a S motion or a sewing motion to avoid removing of the contact and you place it below the contact area. Moving on to the finishing and polishing discs. We can see here, there is a mandrel, okay? And there are discs in different sizes and different colors, okay? Uh, the darker color are grittier. It means that they're more coarse. And then as you go lighter, the coarseness is less, okay? So let's look at the mandrel. The mandrel has two ends. The latch end is attached to the handpiece, okay? The latch type means that it is low speed, okay? And then when we look at the head, you can see it, it's like a cross, okay? So this is where the disc goes. So first we're gonna attach the mandrel in the handpiece, okay? Make sure that it is stable, it's all the way through, okay? Then we're going to attach the disc. The different disc kits come in different colors, but as a rule, the darker is the more grittier and the lighter is the less grittier. So when we look at the disc, okay, we can see here there is a shiny surface and there is no coarseness there. If we flip it, we can see here is coarse, okay? So the coarseness is only on one side. Some types come that it's coarse from both sides, but this type comes in one, okay? And as I said before, these different colors uh, mean that the difference in the grit, okay? So, as we said here, we can feel it. This is gritty, and you can actually see it because it's so coarse. How are we gonna place it? We're just gonna click it in or snap it in, and now it's stable, okay? So, you can place it on this, this way, making the outer surface that has the coarseness. Uh, so that is the surface that will is gonna finish. Or you can flip it, so the coarse area is from the inside, okay? So it depends on the surface you're gonna finish, okay? So we're gonna, and I'm gonna show you how to do that, okay? So now we're gonna start where the coarse surface is on the outside, okay? So here we have a class three, for example. You can use you can use the discs on the palatal surfaces, okay? Just by light touch also to remove any excess around the margins or in the restoration, uh, in a circular motion or in like in a light brushing strokes. You all can also use it on the facial surfaces in a circular motion or light strokes, okay? You can use it interproximally to adjust like the contact area, but you have to make sure that you don't go through the contact area you're just doing a brush stroke to uh, uh, adjust the contour a little bit or remove any excess if present, okay? So you can use it on the palatal or on the facial surfaces, okay? What if we switch it? So let's put the coarse area or the coarse surface from the inside. And this is how you're going to hold the handpiece, okay? You can see the similar motion is just depending on the accessibility and the surface you're finishing, okay? And if you're going to do it facially or interproximally here to adjust the contour, that's how you're gonna hold it, okay? Light brush strokes, okay? And don't forget to follow the contour of the tool so you don't destroy the contour, okay? So now doing the facial surfaces, you need to put the coarse area from the outside. And similarly, you're going to do light brush strokes or circular motion. So as we mentioned, you place 
the gritty surface on the surface you're going to finish. Okay, now for class four, it's the same thing. If the coarse area is from the outside, you're just gonna do gentle strokes from the palatal or from the proximal, making sure you don't go through the contact area so you don't lose it. Okay, you're just gonna adjust any overhang or any um, excess proximally. And also from the facial surface, the same thing similar to class three. So using the disc either in class three or class four is the same, okay? You just need to go very gently. So the disc uh, is an excellent tool that can be used in most surfaces except occlusal surface of class one and two uh, because it can destroy the occlusal anatomy. What about class five? Also, we can use it in a similar way, okay? Just around the margin around the, or around the restoration itself, but we need to take care to follow the contour of the tooth while finishing the restoration, okay? And take care not to injure the gingiva because it's gonna be fast, so it can injure the gingiva without you uh, realizing. So, you can use a smaller size for class five. Typically for class fives, the smaller, the better accessibility and the easier to finish and polish the restoration and it's used in a similar manner. After you do the initial adjustment, you check using the Dental Explorer, okay, to check the margins. The margins should be very smooth, that it is seamless between the tooth and the restoration. If there is any excess, it means you need to continue with the same color, okay, with the finishing uh, disc with the same color, because if you move on to the second color, it will not remove it. The concept for the finishing and polishing discs is similar to the sandpaper or the nail file block. So the layer should be very smooth, as I said, seamless between the tooth and the restoration, so you can move on to the next color. You cannot move on to the next color if there is excess around the margins. So now to move on to the next color, we go to the lighter color and we can see here that it is less gritty than the blue one okay you can see it here okay so and we can see them here side to side we can see the grittiness of the uh, blue compared to the green and if we look at the following color we can see that it is finer than the green and the white over here, you can see that it is even finer than the yellow, okay? So, the blue is coarser and then green finer, yellow finer, and then the white is the finest, okay? So, this is the sequence. From dark to fine, regardless of the colors, because as we said, that different companies come in different colors, okay? And if we look closely here at the white, we can see that it is very fine, that you cannot see anything there. And usually in most kits, the yellow and white is for polishing. If for example, your, your restoration did not need a lot of finishing, so you don't need to start with the blue. You can immediately go to the green and then yellow and white. Okay, so use only three of the colors. So the color you start with is really about how much excess you have on the restoration. Let's say you started with the blue. Can you skip a color and go to the yellow immediately? No, you cannot skip a color. You have to go in sequence. Otherwise, the restoration will not be properly finished and polished. That's how the discs are used. Okay, let's say you want it to be more lustrous. You can use the composite polishing kit. These are the rubber points. So let's start with the torpedo or the flame. Okay, I'm gonna insert it in the low speed. As we said, usually the polishing kits or polishing tools are always uh, low speed, okay? So let's see here in class three, we use the torpedo or the flame on the palatal surface, similar to the uh, flame diamond point, okay? So either class three or four, you can use it similarly on the palatal surfaces, okay? You just need to take care not to use it on the facial surfaces because it can destroy the contour, okay? Let's go to the cup, okay? The cup, you can use it on multiple surfaces. 
You can use it either on the palatal surfaces, okay, of class three and four, and you also can use it in circular motions on the facial surfaces of class three, four, okay, and you can also use it to polish class five, okay, and don't forget, all, always you have to follow the contour of the tooth, okay? Moving on to the wheel. Okay. The wheel you need to take care for polishing the palatal surface is fine. You can use it for class three and four, no worries. Okay, according to the accessibility, you can hold the tool, okay? When using it on the facial surfaces, you need to take care because it has a convex surface or convex tip. So you need to take care while holding the tool, okay, to remove the excess without damaging the contour of the tooth. Okay, so you can use it in class three and four in this manner. Okay, gentle circular motions or light brush strokes. You can use it also interproximally to polish the contour. And you can use it also on class fives to polish it. Okay, just take care of the angle that you hold the tool with. So you use the tool according to the surface you need to finish, okay? We can also use the large disc to finish the surface, but it depends uh, on the accessibility. Okay, so you can use it to finish the facial surfaces of class fives or class uh, three and four. You can also use it on the palatal surface, but sometimes it's a little bit difficult because it's very large. So it depends, uh, as I said, on the accessibility. Okay. So to summarize, according to the surface you're going to finish and polish and according to the size of the restoration or the location or the accessibility or the amount of excess you, you you select the appropriate finishing and polishing tool so whether it is a class one or a class two or three four and five depending on the surface you select the appropriate shape of the finishing and polishing tool okay so you can use one or more of these according to the need so in this video we uh, showed you how to use the finishing and polishing tools to finish and polish class 3, 4, and 5 restorations. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.